And we're rolling. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Dave's Garage. I'm Dave Good. I teach people how to play the saxophone. I play tenor sax. And I've been goofing around with an alto sax lately. Anyway, I teach private lessons here in the Southern California area. It's how I support myself. And I would love to meet with you. If you are in this area, uh, we can connect and uh, put something on the calendar. You can come on by and do that. Reach me, out to me at davegoodsax at gmail.com. One word. Or leave a comment in the comments below. Uh, if you're anywhere in the, in the globe with, uh, with uh, Wi-Fi access, we can do a Zoom session as well. All right, today's session, today's session is about the secret, the secret to better sax study that will lead to better sax playing. But first I'm gonna ramble for just a minute here. Why, because well, it's like about 89 degrees now. I've waited till seven o'clock, you know, and it's cooled down a little bit here. Got the clouds building up outside, got the humidity going on here. Uh, it's uh, pretty crazy. We uh, Nothing really changed in the garage. I <laughs> haven't done much except that we moved in a giant Hammond organ uh, and that in and, uh, and the Leslie and that in and of itself is a, is a story. Got a real good Sunday blues jam going on here in the afternoons. And again, if you're in town, come on, bring your horn. Uh, and then on Fridays, Friday uh, mornings or Friday afternoons, depending on the gig load, I've uh, got a team of jazz musicians who come over here. A team, actually a band. They are better than I am. I, in fact, marvel that they're willing to play with me. Uh, which brings me to another point, the sub point of this uh, whole lecture today is that always be the worst person in whatever band that you're in in order to grow. Man, if you, if you are struggling to catch up and communicate musically with people who are like way past you, you, you can't help but to get better at some point, right? So, so today, all right, today, um, and I'm, this is something I've been thinking about a lot lately. I, I teach, I have been for years, and I, I've, I've just had so many different students come through here, and some have really prospered and gone on and done well. Others have, uh, you know, just been your basic average uh, everyday Joe with a horn, or Joanne, everyday Joanne with a horn. Anyway, uh, now th this, is, this, is, this is geared toward you. You know your way around the horn. You practice. You put in the time, all right? You do what's expected of you, and you put in that time at least, you know, if not daily, at least several times a week, right? And you play out. Uh, you either play out uh, semi-pro, or maybe you just, uh, you know, you ramble around and hit some of the jams. Whatever it is that you do, you, uh, this is you. you. You know your horn, you can solo, you're competent. You got it together, right? And you get up and you blow your solo, and you know, maybe it's based on arpeggios or whatever it is, and uh, it's competent, it sounds good. And maybe your friends give you a little round of applause, I don't know, but then there's always that one uh, woman or man who will get up and blow a solo that Everybody just stops. They just stop. It's so unique and so creative and so innovative and so wonderful that people just stop and they listen. And, and in fact, maybe phone numbers are exchanged after, after the set. And you say, hey, I, how did you, what do you shed? How, do you, how did you get that good? Well, I know the answer to that question. All right. I know the answer to that question. And the answer is feeling it is the secret. All right. Now, let's wind that back, not just while you're performing, right, but feeling it while you're in a place like this, Dave's Garage, the woodshed, right? It's been said so many times in so many different ways, it doesn't matter what you practice, right? Well, okay, to a point. I mean, you have to do the technical stuff to know, uh, what, is, uh, what does this do? What happens when I do that? Where's the G-shirt? Blah, blah, blah. How to blow the horn, how to keep it in tune. You know, all that sort of thing, right? But the by rote repetition on a daily basis of, say, scales from root to top to back to the root. Uh, what does that do? That doesn't do a jazz player very much good. Doesn't do a blues player, rock and roll player. Doesn't do anybody any good, right? Unless you're in the classical uh, forms, and then that environment demands that sort of uh, study. Feeling it is the secret. What you are shedding in terms of do you love what you're playing? 
or are you playing it out of a sense of obligation? Are you playing it, in fact, had you been playing or practicing, practicing what you've been practicing now for so many years in a row that you, you kind of don't even hear it anymore, right? Is it just kind of one of those things that's a labor and you got to go and, you, you know, you got to put the time in. And so you go into the, you know, the woodshed and you sit down or the garages. You sit down and you just play over this stuff, you know, um, and or you do what the books say to do. Got to know your scales. Got to know your majors. Got to know your minors. Got to know your arpeggios. You know, that sort of thing. Is that where you're at? You doing that? Or are you getting up every morning going, man, I cannot wait to get my horn or get home from work and grab my horn. Whatever you do. Uh, and, 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 and get to work and start chopping away at stuff I really love to play. And I don't care what it is. Maybe it's an interval. Maybe it's a, like a minor third and you, you want to maybe start moving it around uh, in, in, the, you know, in all the keys. Maybe you want to do that. Maybe you want to start learning some two fives and make them up yourself or maybe invent some, uh, uh, I don't know, just maybe some random, you know, random phrases or licks or anything. Or transcribe somebody that's really like hot, smoking hot, and take a couple of licks out of that context and take them around the circle of fourths. Uh, you know, I it just it's but I don't care what it is. It has to it has to light your fire. I mean, you got to feel it, right? And that's the difference between you and the person who gets up at that jam or gig or whatever it is, shows up and blows everybody's doors off. They weren't born with it. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. There there is no such thing as talent. No. What they did that you don't do, what they're doing that you're not doing, is they're, 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 they're shedding stuff that they absolutely love. And again, you know, there are so many different ways to study scales. You can look all those up. You can find any, any variety of ways to do scales or different kinds of scales uh, or the modes that, all on YouTube. That's not the purpose of this. The purpose and the whole point of all this was uh, A, to try to do a short to a video and not go over, you know, the time limit I promised before. And <clears throat> we're getting close right now. And then it, it is to, to really just talk about, you know, the secret, the absolute core secret behind all of this, you know, is to make music with this beautiful, uh, God, what is this thing, like a trumpet with a weird, a weird mouthpiece. I mean, I, it, it's, it's amazing that this thing makes gorgeous uh, sound, but it does. And th that's the point of all this, is that you've got to have this burning passion about what it is, even in the practice room. And man, don't even, don't even, don't even tell me that you got like a practice tone and then a different performance tone. Oh no, you don't. Oh no, you don't. You are woodshedding in the same tone, the same sound, the same vibe and feel that you take to the stage when you play, okay? If you don't have a, if you're not playing anywhere, uh, I could encourage you, I couldn't encourage you more to, uh, to hook up, right? Uh, you can find people in your area to play with, to set up, and it doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to be anything like fancy. I mean, it took a long time before the garage uh, came together. But then again, I've been doing garage jams since, oh, uh, I was 11 maybe. So I haven't really gotten very far, have I? Different garages, of course, but that's a different story. All right, so that's the nut. Today's session is you got to feel it. In the practice room, you got to be working on stuff that you feel passionate about playing. You enjoy it. That way you're going to dig it. You're going to hear it. You're going to hear the little glitches. You're going to want to go over it. You're going to want to make it just absolutely wonderful. I want you to be like on fire tomorrow when you go into your practice situation and you start shedding your horn. All right. You got any questions? Of course you do. Reach out. DaveGoodSax at gmail.com or leave a little blurb in the comments below. Subscribe if you like, hit the like button, whatever the, uh, you know, whatever the, the thumb thing, I don't know. And I just so want to just end by saying I'm so grateful that uh, we've, we've, we're close to 300 now, 300 subscribers. And my, I, I've met so many of you and shared comments and, and talked to you. And I, honestly, I, I, I am humbled by your presence. I, I'm grateful that you're there. And as I've said it before, I'll say it again, I, I, I have a better life because of all of you. So thank you so much for being there. Now grab that horn, which head, play something that you really love.
Catch you next time. Thanks for being here.